Hi guys, my name's Subtutor, I'm the man on the Silver Mountain, and welcome back. Now today I want to talk about, uh, well, I want to kind of give some examples of how daft love is. Yeah, because there, there are so many people that I talk to on a fairly regular basis, who, be they clients or be they friends, who are so hard on themselves. Yeah? Uh, oh, why would anyone love me? Oh, I'm just going to be lonely forever. And, and so on and so forth. Because love is complicated and love is difficult. And so I wanted to, to kind of give some examples of how absurd love is and why, because these things are so daft, no one should give up hope, yeah? Um, it, it's important not to. You know, you feel hopeless and so as a result your, your life erodes around you because you're not engaging with it anymore. You know, it, it's important to, to stick it out, to, to, to continue to push forward. And so... With these examples, I want to highlight, firstly, how daft we are inside and out, in some instances. Um, you know, how, how ridiculous our minds are when it comes to things like dating and attraction and, and so on and so forth. How hard it is to navigate, and then just, just keeping in mind that, you know, there are 7 billion people on the planet. You've tried dating or tried getting into relationships with, what, a handful of them? There are certain friends of mine that have only had one relationship and then it's ended and they've gone, oh, no one will love me. It's like, please grow up. You're, you're one of my friends and I will tell this to you to your face. Don't be daft. Have you tried dating every single person on the planet? Because if you haven't, then shut up and get back out there. But anyway, let's get into these examples. So to start off with... There's a lot of uh, discussion around playing hard to get and, and negging and all of these kind of negative behaviours um, in regards to to dating. You know, the whole pickup artist line of, of kind of, uh, what is it? Treat them mean to keep them keen. Which, by the way, doesn't really work. I wouldn't suggest doing that unless unless you have a set of other things that you're going to bring to that, that situation. Because chances are you're probably just going to be an asshole in that situation. You're not going to make any friends, uh, let alone anything else. But in a 2014 study, it was found that men during a speed dating experiment where the men were placed in front of women and, and so on and so forth as, as per your fairly regular speed dating setup, um, they found that they wanted with the women that played hard to get by acting disinterested in what the man was saying and in, in the questions that he was asking you know uh, and this was though a very specific set of things where the men only experienced this when they went I want that one so a normal woman playing hard to get when he was just conversing with her and he hadn't found her like uniquely attractive or uniquely interesting um, it, no effect essentially but if he had already gone God, she's beautiful, I want to, to go and engage with her, and then she seemed disinterested, then it was a chase, it was a target that, that, that he had that he could give chase to. It became exciting. It became a challenge. And yet, the, the interesting thing about this, and the almost paradoxical thing about this, was that when this was going on, the men that, that were going, yes, we, we want that woman uh, she's going to play hard to get and, and we want her more because of it. They also said that they liked her less than some of the others. So that, that it became this mess of, I don't like you very much, but I'm having fun chasing you. And this is where, again, sometimes you will chase down the wrong person and then realise your, your error um, or or whatever else. You know, it, it's it's... A mess of complications and so you might find someone insanely attractive for no realistic reason and then get with them and then find that you were right all along and there was no reason and then it all turns into a mess of a situation and guess what that's no reason to give up on the next one maybe next time learn that you know that you like the chase but also that you need to pay attention to whether or not that person's nice enough in the first place um, the next one, and this is this is one that, that um, I like talking to people about, especially when I was doing a lot of stuff with kind of relationship coaching and talking about kind of dating coaching and, and online uh, dating and stuff like that. 
And this was in 2011, researchers uh, found that um, when, when looking at photos of, of the opposite sex, there were um, very interesting responses in regards to which facial expression uh, that person was pulling and how attractive they were. So men found women more attractive when they looked happy, when they smiled, um, which again is possibly why you see men going, there's an attractive woman, you should smile. Um, you know, suggesting that they should look happy. Uh, like I was one of those people who would do it at work, but I'd do it to everybody. I'd walk around going, smile, you'll live longer. And it was just a way of breaking tension. But there's a reason why it's one of those things that gets said so often, almost in a catcalling way, to women, uh, more so than anyone else. And it's not just it's a, it's not just a stopgap. It's not just a break. It's because that's what they want to see, you know. Um, and it's it's a way of potentially improving someone's day, but also it's a way of just them going basically, yeah, you're attractive, and I want to see you smile. Not usually the way it's explained. Not usually the way it's put across. Not condoning catcalling, just saying that's possibly a reason why. But on the other hand, women rated men when uh, more as more attractive when they displayed more in the way of pride in their the way that their their face came across when they looked more serious when they weren't smiling, uh, but when they they had a more open face. So you know, no frowning and and looking uh, miserable and angry, but having a kind of open expression over the over your eyebrows and, and kind of down on, on your, uh, your your jawline. Um, so looking maybe more positive without smiling. Although the thing that was most interesting from the study was that shame was considered to be an attractive facial expression. And I'm not exactly sure how you would show shame in your face uh, just on reflex or without it being on reflex rather. Um, but apparently shame was was a an attractive facial expression across both men and women. So, uh, yeah, uh, make of that what you will. But it's it's like these surface level um, appearances um, that we can we can perceive and we can work with. They can have significant impact. And so, someone who's got a face that's otherwise potentially very unattractive could then just stop pulling the the facial expression that they that that person finds unattractive and could become attractive. And so again, we're ridiculous creatures. The smallest change will potentially change your entire perception. In which case, again, don't give up hope. You know, we we're, we're too daft to give up on because we're already hopeless. Um the next one is is one that I find quite funny, um, and that is the uh, and it's something that I do. I'm doing it right now, and that's that if you lo use an awful lot of uh, hand gestures, you know, if you're very confident in the space that you have. So it was a 2016 study where they they um, women and men were observed in again speed dating sessions because that's the a way f to get the most information in the shortest period of time, even if it's maybe not representative to all kind of dating and and kind of uh, pairing up kind of situations. You know, it gives them a, a good idea of interactive uh, elements, I suppose. And the results showed that people were twice as likely to say that they wanted to see someone again or that they liked that person if that person was relaxed enough to speak with their hands and pull all kinds of arm gestures and, and talk more um, with their body as much as with their mouth. And so, you know, it's it's an, an interesting um, set of, of ideas there where it's just, again, the confidence element coming out there. But it's not, you know, I think that's that's kind of a rule for, for everyone, isn't it? Don't stand in the corner and talk with your arms crossed and your head down when you're interested in someone. You know, show them that you're interested by opening up to them. You know, if you want to be close to that person then why wouldn't you open up? But then apparently also for the same study, uh, the researchers set up online profiles for men and women on a GPS-based GPS dating app, which I'm guessing would probably be Tinder, um, showing them in both uh, expansive and contracted postures, 
Uh, and again, sure enough, they found online that the open body language was enough to gain a larger numbers of um, or a larger number rather of responses than the the contracted one. So again, it's it's simple body language stuff. Don't cross your arms. Don't have your hands in your pockets, out of sight, or anything like that. Talk with them. You know, I, I'm one. I'm, I'll be the first person to admit that I like having my hands in my pockets or my thumbs tucked into my belt or something like that. Your know, hands out of the way because at times I just don't know what to do with them. But if you're talking to someone, if you're especially if you're talking to someone that you like or that you want to be enthusiastic with, then have your hands on show. Um, you know, take up a little bit more space. I'm not talking about kind of sprawling out, but like you know, I'm talking with my hands right here. I'm confined within the tiny uh, screen that you guys can see, and you know, I'm I'm always talking with my hands. You can go back and look through all my videos and just see how I'm just talking with my hands. Sometimes I'm making gestures that make absolute no fucking sense and now I'm really self-conscious about the fact that I'm waving my hands around all the time. But if you can just relax and open up and you know you don't ne don't need to wave your hands around like me or, or anyone else but if you can just you know open up a little bit more yeah um, show that you're not afraid of that person as much as as willing to kind of open up to them then I'm sure it will do you so much extra good um, and then the the last one and this is one that we've seen on all manner of social media kind of shown off time and time and time again in other kind of follow-up experiments but there was a study uh, done at the University of Massachusetts um, where they paired off groups of people and they just had to stare into each other's eyes for two minutes. Like, do nothing else apart from sit across from each other and gaze into each other's eyes. And then, rather unsurprisingly, those people related that, you know, they had increased feelings of, of love and affection and care for those people that, whose eyes they had been staring into. Some had, some even report that they had gone and made friendships with those people afterwards because of that connection. Um, you know, it suggests that eye contact to us is very important, which again should be no surprise to anybody. But it has the capacity to ignite feelings and generate a greater level of love and intimacy and care with those other people, uh, even if we've never met them before. In which case, this, this kind of highlights why good eye contact is important. And I'm not talking about staring, like gazing into someone's eyes, but just having a relaxed appreciation of where that person's eyes are and checking in that they're still there every, every once in a while, you know. Like, it becomes unnatural if you just stare into someone's eyes. But if you're having a very pointed conversation, then, you know, looking someone in the face, looking at, at what their mouth is saying, looking at where their eyes are looking, you know, that's that's a good way of getting into it. I, I, from what I recall, uh, from some other studies that have been done, when we're actually having a conversation, an awful lot of um, where our eyes are focused tend to sit on the other person's mouth so that we can appreciate the kind of word forms as we're hearing them so it adds into what we're hearing. Um, it's why when you, you see stuff with a, a, a changed audio track but someone's speaking in it, uh, you can potentially hear that person saying the words differently than they actually were. You know, it's it's weird, illusionary stuff um, that, that's focused on our... our the way our brain matches stuff between our eyes and our ears. But if you're just, you know, having a normal conversation and not doing any daft shit replacing audio and whatever else, just looking someone in the face, looking someone in the eyes and paying attention, it's going to generate, at the very least, a little bit more connection between the two of you. You know, there's a reason why one of the nicest things that you can you can just do quietly with someone that you love someone that you care about is sit down and just gaze into each other's eyes and just be happy and quiet and whatever else you know it's it's that those moments of just gazing into each other's soul we know that it does stuff like syncing up our heartbeats as well uh, and and other things like that have been reported from other studies where you know holding someone's hand staring into their eyes syncs up our body rhythms and you know so it's it's one of those things where it's just like again looking you know looking at your shoes all the time or looking off around the room when you're trying to have a conversation with someone especially someone that you want to get to to know better or someone you want to start a relationship with 
it's not going to do you any favours. So again, these though, we, we have so many little minute things that are so, at times, so hard to learn that no one should be giving up hope. Yeah, no one should be just out and out giving up. And, and you know, there are so many other examples that I could give from how we're attracted to people that look like us or look like a partner that we've had in the past or look like our parents. Um, how um, if you respond to certain uh, kind of bids for attention and then they do the same back, that it can generate feelings. You know, there, there are so many different examples of how we're daft when it comes to love and sex and romance and all those kind of things that no one should be giving up. You know, no one should be just counting themselves out just because they've had a couple of bad experiences. You're not going to be able to get through every, like 7 billion people on the planet. I'll grant you that. But you don't have to. You know, there, there are so many people around you or in other places near you, places that you can access. And as much as you might think that you're very fussy or have high standards or whatever else, Firstly, make sure those are realistic. And secondly, give yourself a break. You know, there's there's so much more that you can do if this is something that you want. But also, one of the things that I learned, the more you look, the more pointed it is that you are only looking for a partner, the less likely you're going to get one. You need to look to experience life and be willing to have people come with you. And again, that's where being open and paying attention to people and... and you know, having the right kind of outward demeanour is is as important as anything else. And you pitting yourself, you you being miserable, doesn't put you into any of those states. Yeah? It doesn't even show shame. It just shows you being depressed. It just shows you being sad. Not clinically depressed, just a bit mopey, you know. And and so shift out of that. Accept yourself, do a little bit of, of introspection and analysis and realise that actually you should just maybe go have fun and maybe someone will want to have some, you know, fun with you. But hey, anyway, I, if you guys would like to hear me go into more of these these things, more of these reasons as to, to why humans are daft when it comes to relationships and, and what we find attractive, um, like the colour red, for instance, um... If you want me to go into more of those things and more studies like this in another video just for fun, then I'd gladly do that because these things are fascinating and hilarious. Um, if you'd want to go into, uh, if you'd want me to go into a video about how you can maybe shift out of of that funk where you're feeling uh, kind of miserable, give you some activities to do, things like that, then by all means, there are some that I've done in videos in the past, but I will of course go and put another video uh, together on that if you guys would like to see it. Uh, but also if you guys have got anything else that, that you would like to add that maybe you have been through that other people could learn from, then please leave that down in the comments and uh, I'd love to read it. I'm sure other people would find it interesting and useful as well. So thank you very much for watching guys and I will see you in the video later. Take care. Thank you very much for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video and found it interesting, then please drop us a like, share this video and subscribe for more and I'll see you in the video tomorrow. Take care.